Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Radio Joe. Today we had a FT2000 HF radio come across the bench here with a blown up front end receiver. Um, gonna make a little quick video here just to show you what I went through a little bit of the troubleshooting and uh, repair of this radio. And um, hopefully you enjoy it. Stay tuned. Um, belongs to a friend of mine. The uh, front end got blown up from a nearby transmitter being too too powerful so uh, we're going to take a look at this and uh, see if we can't solve the uh, problem. Now, this, is, this is a common problem on these FT2000s so we already know what's wrong with it but I figured I'm going to show you guys you know, a little bit of the, the troubleshooting that I did and you know how I figured out the problem um, and I mean a lot of it was done just by research on the internet and things like that but you can kind of trace out the circuit figure out where you're losing your uh where you're losing your your signal so let's take a look i've already got it taken apart and um injecting a signal into it now you'll see you don't you don't hear anything i got the volume all the way turned up and there's pretty much no signal on the meter now if you look we're uh I don't know if it's easy to see that screen on there but anyway we're generating um about neg 70 uh, signal on am right now the service monitor and directly into the antenna port <laughs> we're hearing absolutely nothing now if i crank this signal up that's neg 55 you see at neg 55 we're starting to get a little bit of reading on the meter there so and we're starting to hear a little bit coming out of the um out of the speaker there so this thing is definitely messed up now um they do have the schematics online and uh, I was able to track down, I'm not going to go through the whole process, um, where that signal goes, but um, it's not too hard to do. You can, um, you know, download the schematic and take a look at it. This is the main board here. Uh, if we go up to here, this is a, uh, this is a, flow a flow diagram of all the signals, so you can actually follow the signal from where it comes in um, over here at the port through a number of different components and 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 track along the way and I actually used an RF millivolt meter to to look at different points along here to make sure that I had the same the same signal as I was traveling through these different stages until I got to the first local oscillator um, which is where your your um, your two preamps are at and um, you know if you if you hit this IPO button here you have amp one, amp two, and IPO. Okay, so here we are. We have RF amp one, and we have RF amp two. Um, those are two little transistors that sit in there and amplify the uh, the incoming RF. And out of them, basically, the next component is this first IF mixer. Uh, this SPM five thousand and one chip right here. Uh, that is what I believe to be the culprit of the problem today in this particular radio. Now, um, having gotten all the way down to this point in the schematic and um, going through the circuit testing, you know, see where I'm losing signal level, I actually got to these components and found that they had been changed before by Yezu. Um, the owner of the radio did tell me that Yezu had worked on the radio, so... Um, that even confirms my my beliefs more that that those are our, our problem components. So let's take a look at where those are. Here we are looking at the inside of the board now, um, and the the culprits are either this little transistor right here or this one over here. These are your amp one and two, um, or this balance mixer that's down inside of the uh, can here this little tiny guy right here in the middle that's what we're going to attempt to change today uh, let's see if that doesn't fix this radio I'm pretty sure that's the culprit uh, I have decent amplification coming through these two amps over here uh, the next thing in line is this mixer and that's where everything stops so let's get set up to change that out and we'll uh, see if we can fix this guy okay we're all set up now. Got our hot air soldering station ready. 
to heat this dude up and get him pulled out of there. Now you got to be careful when you're doing this. You don't want to get the components nearby too hot. You can blow little capacitors and whatnot off the board. So try and just get some heat right on the chip that you're trying to work on. And just grab it out of there. Gotta get it a little warm and then she comes out. See her there on my uh, the end of my uh, tweezers. That's all it takes. Now I do like to clean up the uh, pads a little bit with some wick. Regular soldering iron. All right, so we got some wick. Get in there and clean up those pads. Get all that old solder off. All right, looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to get a little solder paste on there. I'm going to use a little tiny screwdriver to just dab it on where the contacts go. It'll wick onto the pads if we get the right amount of heat in there, so we don't have to worry about getting it across multiple sets. Heads. Just gotta make sure we get some down in there. Now, new chips. Very tiny. Come in this little package here. Do have a uh, mark on there to tell us which ones are the. Uh, number one pin and in this video the number one pin will go in this corner right here I looked in the manual because it was hard to see on the old the old chip they got it so hot soldering it in this one here has a little dot in the corner though it's gonna make it easier to uh, see which way that guy goes in there so there he is Really little tiny dude. Um, I'm gonna look at it real quick with my loop so I can see. Uh, I divide up that number one pin. We can set her down in there. It's good to get your angle just right before you drop it in. Push it down into that paste. And get her about where she goes there. Now if we get too much solder on there, we can uh, clean some of that off with uh, braid. Okay. It says it's warm. So you gotta be careful. You wanna blow as down as you can. these uh, pins settling where they want to be all right so I think we've got it in there um, I'm gonna inspect it really good with my loop before I put power to it but from what I could see in my magnifier it looks like uh, I've got all the excess solder and it does appear to be soldered down so hopefully this uh, this will work and this radio will be good to go again. Okay, so I'm sorry about the noise here. I'll, I'll turn that down a little bit. This time we're putting a minus 112 signal into it. You can see we're already showing some deflection on the S meter. 
and we can hear the nice noise that it's making so if I turn that up to about neg 100 we got a nice S5 on the meter um, and uh, I don't know I think this guy is fixed um, so a little bit of soldering skill uh, involved there and getting that thing going but nothing too extraordinary you know these this is a uh, inexpensive Chinese hot air station that I paid like hundred and fifty dollars for um, it's probably not as good as you know a really expensive one but you saw it do the job so um, solder paste can be had relatively inexpensive and and then a regular pencil iron to clean it up with some some wick and really the repair was was rather simple to do let me turn that down so we stop spamming the video with all that noise but uh, radio's back alive now I think its owner will be very happy well there you have it we got it fixed wasn't too bad one component was blown um, it's kind of a rule of mine often unless there's a cascade type failure it's usually just one thing um, Yezu repaired this radio in the past they did change both amplifiers and the mixer wasn't necessary likely um, the amplifiers were not bad this time so uh, who knows you know they probably just have a standard uh, repair list of things that they change when they have a problem like that and we'll just go ahead and and do it whether it needs it or not uh, I don't like to do any more repair than I have to especially with the surface mount components because you always run the risk of damaging the board when you're heating up traces and things like that so if there's something that you don't need to change I would not change it you can always go back and change it later it's different when you're sending it to to the manufacturer and it's costing you hundreds of dollars for shipping so when you're doing it yourself or you're doing it at your friend's house or something like that it's not it's not that bad so well I hope you enjoyed the video uh, hope you got something out of that I know I certainly did it was uh, it was a fun troubleshoot and a fun repair now I know I didn't show the entire troubleshooting process but I probably spent an hour um, tracing through the circuit <sighs> would have made for a little bit of a dry video so we'll save that for for later on maybe but you know we, we got to the important part we, we changed the part we did get the radio working so um, and that's what I wanted to wanted to show you in this video today so if you enjoy our videos certainly hit that subscribe button down there um, we definitely like your support um, and I uh, hope to see you on the next video have a good day